you're a Navy pilot. Your task, put 20 tons of speeding aircraft onto what looks like a postage stamp floating on the water. In two seconds, you will go from 114 knots to a dead stop, and you're not going to use your brakes. A thin cable strung across the deck is the only thing that stops you. The only thing that stops the cable is resistance from the brakes under the deck. Mechanical resistance is very much like the deck cable. It offers an opposing force to the motion of an object and affects its rate. In mechanical systems, there are two types of resistance. One is called drag force, which is the resistance of a fluid when an object tries to move through it. The other is friction, when two objects rub against each other. Brakes use friction to stop wheels from turning. An aircraft uses both drag force and friction when it's trying to make a landing. Let's look at the first case. Consider all the forces that are acting on an aircraft when it's in flight. The wings, of course, provide lift, which keep it in the air. This is opposed by the force of gravity trying to pull it down. The engine, or engines, provide the force of thrust to push it forward. And this is opposed by the drag force, or the resistance of the air, which tries to slow the aircraft down. Drag force is one of the biggest obstacles a high-speed vehicle must overcome. More than half the work being done by the engine is simply pushing the air aside. What the drag force affects is the rate of the vehicle or its speed. So the mechanical resistance is the drag force divided by the rate, the speed. The same is true for boats and ships. They spend almost all their energy plowing through the water. As the boat accelerates, the resistance in the water increases. Soon, the resistance is as powerful as the force from the engine, so the boat can go no faster. In this case, the drag force of the water is also trying to slow the skier down, which is good because it keeps his rope taut. Wind tunnels intentionally create drag force, so technicians like Lane Ito can measure how shape affects fuel economy. This is the test section of the Boeing Transonic Wind Tunnel. Here we simulate airplanes flying through the air at their regular speeds. This airplane is connected to a six component balance. It measures all the forces that are applied to this airplane. The main force that we're worried about is drag. Drag is something that occurs in everything. If you ever been uh, riding in a car and you stick your hand out the window, if you stick it straight out, you feel that resistance right away. It'll push your hand right back if you're, uh, if you're going at a, a decent speed. But if you streamline it, and you put your hand like that, you don't feel as much resistance. So that's the main thing, that's what we try to do here. If this was a, a flat nose plane, all that resistance would be pushing right on the front of the plane. So we want to streamline everything so it's all smooth and everything's just perfect so it just flies through the air. Another thing that causes drags is turbulence. Turbulence is something that increases drag because the way something is on the plane, It'll cause turbulence or the air to move in a funny way over the plane, and that'll increase the drag. So we have to watch our lines on our wing and in the cell so it doesn't cause this turbulence. For this type of aircraft, just a 1% increase in drag means that the aircraft has to carry an extra 3,000 pounds of fuel. So resistance is an important factor to consider. Let's look at the second type of mechanical resistance, friction. Friction occurs between all moving parts. Sometimes it's a problem, but it too can be used to control the motion of an object. Brakes use friction in a controlled way to slow the motion of the plane. The amount of friction will vary depending on the roughness of the surfaces and the force that's pressing them together. Naturally, two surfaces that are rough will have more difficulty sliding over one another than surfaces that are smooth. The roughness or the smoothness of a surface is represented by a Greek symbol called mu. Mu is the coefficient of friction, 
or in other words, the texture of the surface. The other factor that affects friction is the amount of force pressing the two surfaces together, represented by N. So friction is found by multiplying mu, the coefficient of friction, by N, the normal force. For brakes, resistance is controlled by increasing or decreasing N, the normal force, and is provided by the levers that force the brake shoes against the drum. Tires use mu to affect the friction between the rubber and the road. Racing tires are quite soft, so they have a different coefficient of friction than normal tires. They need a high coefficient of friction for better traction. Transport trucks, on the other hand, are much heavier, so the force between the two surfaces is greater and the tires can be much harder. Uh, that pleases the drivers because they last a lot longer. Have you ever noticed how it always seems harder to get something moving than it is to keep it moving? It's not your imagination. When two objects are not moving against each other, or static, the friction between them is a little higher than when they slide. The object of greases and lubricants is to make any sliding easier. Friction and drag force are the two types of resistance that appear in mechanical systems. They affect not only how fast an object will move, but how much work must be done to move it. See if you can spot which is being used in these examples. Mechanical resistance can work for us or against us, but one thing is for certain, life would be very difficult without it. <laughs>